Hello and welcome everybody to According to Andrew, number 58, Copyright or Open Source. So uh, today I just wanted to touch on uh, some of the uh, ideas, trends, and stuff like that around uh, copyright, some of the issues that you run into, and uh, kind of my thoughts on it, um, and what the different um, movements or, or, ideal, or maybe ideas around the, the thing are. Um, so uh, just to give a brief overview... For those unfamiliar, uh, copyright basically gives you the right to uh, have something uh, under your jurisdiction for a set amount of time. Uh, the actual overall amount of time is uh, generally your overall lifetime uh, plus uh, a certain period after your death as well. Uh, it's 70 years. Um, so uh, as a general rule, the works created... Uh, after January 1st, 17th, 1978, uh, copyright protection lasts for the life of the author plus an additional 70 years. Now, if you're like me, that sounds absolutely ridiculous. Um, and so that leads to uh, the idea of copyleft, which is kind of a weird name, but it's the name they came up with, which is supposed to be basically the opposite of copyright. Um, and uh, a copyleft is the practice of granting the rights to freely distribute, modify, and modify intellectual property with the requirement that the same right be preserved in any derivative works created by that property. Um, and this is a way to kind of prevent what was done with Apple and uh, uh, Google and YouTube and a lot of the uh, early 2000s startups that have become uh, absolutely tyrannical over the last uh, couple years. To uh, They basically had a bunch of open source uh, material that they took and made some modifications to and then uh, used that to copyright it and hide all of their work behind um, secrecy and stuff like that. And then I don't exactly know how it works, but they might have been able to uh, conceal some of their original works as well or, or made it so that the original code couldn't be used as well. Um, so <clears throat> that brings us to the next thing, which is open source. Uh, so these are kind of the three main things that are going on. Uh, an open source source uh, software is a type of software in which uh, source code is released under the license in which the copyright holder grants users the right to use, study, change, and distribute the software uh, to anyone for any purpose. Uh, open source software uh, may be developed in a collaborative public manner. So the idea with that being um, that's where we kind of ran it. That's where this copy left movement is kind of trying to shore up some of the weaknesses of the open source. So somebody could have developed something, made it open source, and then somebody can take that, modify it, and then copyright it, and then kind of lock it behind a, a barrier. And so the, the copy left type thing makes it so that um, those people that are going to use this type of material and, and benefit from the open source thing uh, continue to, in good faith, uh, give that kind of back to the public and back to, uh, you know, the next generation of developers and uh, people that are going to try to use this technology for the betterment of society and, and figure out a way in which they can leapfrog off of what has already been developed. Obviously, the last uh, section that kind of falls into this is the idea of a patent, and the patent basically uh, gives the right for anybody to basically monopolize a technology that they've developed for 20 years. And in my opinion, uh, they all have their pros and cons. Uh, patents, when you compare them to, like, the, the classic ones are the copyright and the patent, and the open source and the copyleft uh, type things are more recent type developments. So the patent is, in my opinion, much, much more reasonable than the idea of a copyright because the idea that you get all of your entire lifetime plus 70 years uh, to protect something I think is quite ridiculous, and... Uh, you know, it's nice that, uh, these pictures, this picture that you're seeing right now, uh, isn't protected by copyright because it's, it was made in, a lot of these were made in early 1900s, uh, late 1800s. Um, and so I can, you know, use these as backgrounds and share them with you. I don't have to worry about copyright strikes. And, uh, you know, maybe some of the other videos that I've made, uh, fall into some of that issue where there's maybe copyright material in them uh, or other type of issues just because, uh, you know, memes kind of fall into this weird gray area. Uh, and the, the idea of uh, transformative work, it, it hits in this, this odd, odd place. 
<clears throat> so, um, that's kind of my perspective on, on that, but then you got the, uh, the other side of it where, um, you know, that 70, you know, all of it comes down to, uh, what is seen as like good and, uh, anybody with any of these systems, uh, anybody can use it for good or for evil as it were. Uh, and maybe there's arguments that one is better than the other or has a higher percent chance to generate, uh, more collaborative work. Uh, copy, the copy left movement certainly seems that way, but, uh, I, it's fairly new as well. So, uh, usually abuses and corruption and stuff like that is something that comes, uh, farther down the line, uh, after kind of it's the game theory has been, uh, and the, the way in which you can break the system has been figured out. Uh, that usually takes a little bit longer than, uh, when it's first developed. So, uh, but one way in which the copyright, uh, has been used to great effect is with the, uh, Tolkien estate. So, uh, Tolkien passed away, um, I don't remember exactly when, but it, his um, intellectual property then passed to his son, and he was a very good steward of that, and made it so that, uh, like, things like the Lord of the Rings movies, um, and to, I guess, a lesser extent, The Hobbit, uh, stayed true to form, and really, they, they couldn't SJWIs uh, Tolkien, and a whole bunch of other stuff, in which I'm worried that this new Amazon, uh, picture type thing is going to do right you're gonna uh, add in a bunch of elements that don't aren't Tolkien that aren't about the story uh you know they're gonna have gay people running around and and uh you know uh people are gonna be gender bent and race bent for no real reason and and you're gonna have all these issues that are gonna come up in the overall uh story that uh he did a good job of protecting and uh and Tolkien's son I forgot his name apologies uh, had passed away in like 2019. So they don't have that, they don't necessarily have that good steward, um, to protect it. You know, usually when it comes to, uh, someone like when it comes to Kings and stuff like that, usually the, the King that builds it, you know, does a good job. And his son usually can do a good job of maintaining what has been built. Uh, cause he saw his father come up the hardships. He lived through some of the hardships himself. He understands, uh, some of the context, but when, the son of the, or when the, uh, grandson of the overall project comes into power or, uh, is given the responsibility of the kingdom as it were, uh, he doesn't necessarily have the context under which these things were, were given and, and the hardships that were had to be done to, uh, make this stuff happen. And so usually that's when the downfall, uh, happens and, you know, you can try to teach people these things and there are certain lessons that they can be taught, but, is limited to, uh, it's harder to learn a lesson when it doesn't directly affect your life, right? So it's like, we do these things because X, Y, and Z, and you, you start to understand and okay, I understand like why this is done. But when it's, it's something that it's like, if you start slacking, uh, you don't necessarily see the ramifications of right away. And, uh, or the ramifications don't come for another generation, it makes it much easier to slack off and and not um, stay the course and be have that, that edge that the other generations did because the other generations, it was, if you don't do this, you die kind of thing. Or I know that's an extreme example in this, this situation, but, uh, you know, there's... The, the, the reason was much more real, tangible, and visceral for them as compared to uh, your third generation... Uh, uh, steward of a nation, an estate, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. And this is why you kind of have this tendency to uh, rise and fall. Uh, wooden clogs on the way up, uh, silk slivers coming down, right? The, uh, it's it's hard hard going on the way up, and then once, once you hit the peak and things get easy and soft, uh, there's no reason to uh, maintain the hard ways, and the whole thing collapses uh, because of it. So that's kind of, uh, my, I guess, view on that, but, uh, you know, then you have the, the opposites thing where they aren't a good steward of it. And you have things like star Wars where they, they absolutely ruined it. Um, and they, they SJWIs like the whole thing and you see what happens there where the whole, uh, IP and the, the name, the brand star Wars got hollowed out and it no longer means anything, uh, because those people that are creating it aren't actually creating, uh, star Wars. They're creating, 
uh, something with the name Star Wars uh, plastered onto it, and uh, corporate shills seem to think that that is all that's required, and that it, the reason that people have trust to brand names is because that brand has done good by them, and once they no longer... Uh, and it, with that, it'll allow them to, like, if that, that brand makes a slip-up, it, it will... Fans of that product are like, well, you've done good by me so far in the past that, you know, you've made one mistake, people make mistakes, and so I will let this slide, but um, it won't... Uh, you won't necessarily hold on to that if it's a continued problem, right? And, you know, you only get so many mistakes before people are going to try to hold you accountable. So, uh, which one's better and which one's worse? It's kind of hard for me to say definitively. Uh, you know, I'm... And I like the fact that all the options are, are technically available. I think copyright should be um, cut back severely, right? I think the idea that copyright um, and patents don't hold the same, like, you can come up with a miracle drug that cures all of cancer, let's say, and, um, and you only get to, to, uh, the amount of time and investment that went into that is going to far exceed most of the time investment of, let's say, a book, and you only get to hold on to that, uh, privilege for 20 years, but, uh, somebody that wrote a book and did some, some semi-creative thing, and there's, most stories that aren't new, right? There's nothing new under the sun. Uh, so somebody that writes a book gets to hold on to that for 70 years past their the death of them. Like, I think 20 years is perfectly reasonable, right? And then, you know, it allows people to make books about it, makes, make comics, expand the universe, you know, uh, make that, that I, the fanfic basically reality and, and turn it into canon, uh, which, you know, depending on your opinion of, of fan fiction, uh, you know, may or may not be a good thing uh some people are uh you know it could ruin the canon and stuff like that and 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 ruin the whole thing but uh i think you know this the bad stuff will fall and the good stuff will rise to the top uh and i haven't read the wheel of time but you know it it's not like it can't be done uh they had brain uh, i forgot who originally wrote it but then brandon sanderson kind of took it over and, and finished out the series and uh you know it's in a sense, he was a fan, and in a, uh, that became the actual writer for the thing, and it seemed to have turned out pretty pretty good. Most people, that's uh, a top fantasy series for a lot of people. Uh, personally, haven't read it, but it's just one of the better examples for what I'm talking about. So, uh, these are kind of some of these examples where uh, stuff can can come over and and work so well, and especially in the era of computing and uh, code and stuff like that, and and uh, these foundational type bricks to our the network of like the web and all that stuff. Having that be a collaborative project, I think, is much more helpful uh, for the overall system. Now, a problem that I could see in terms of national security that like, runs into this is if you don't, if you you're not doing anything to protect the national security of this. Uh, source code and stuff like that, it could become very easy for someone like a, a foreign entity to attack our infrastructure if it was all based on, on open source code. So I guess that's uh, a potential problem, but at the same time, you have just as many minds working to fix and patch loopholes and stuff like that as you have trying to break it. So it might be a wash in the end, and we've seen so many times with even this pre proprietary software and other stuff that like day one it gets jailbroken by like somebody right so it's probably a threat that i'm worried of, like it's unfounded worry as it were um so yeah i those are kind of just my thoughts on on what the different uh things are their pros their cons what uh are some of the limits of them and uh and what i think of the overall uh, systems and and what they're good for uh I certainly think that there's a place for every one of those, um, and I'm not necessarily against uh, one or the other. Maybe uh, the one thing that I'm probably against is copyright being as extensive as it is, but uh, I don't think it should not exist. Uh, and in that regard, I uh, hope that that kind of gives you some perspective on what all these things are if you weren't familiar with them and wanted to uh, know more about them. Anyway, uh, thank you guys all for listening. Uh, no matter what platform you're on, uh, YouTube, BitChute, Podbean, uh odyssey 
uh, leave a like, uh, leave a comment, subscribe. I, uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you guys all for listening. Goodbye.